The major work at the City Music Cleveland October 2022 concert will be Beethoven's First Symphony. Welcome to another City Music Cleveland preview podcast. I'm Jim Merling along with Eric Kish. Eric asked the concertmaster and the featured soloist of the upcoming concert about the music on the program. First, the concertmaster, Laura Hamilton, about the music and her role as a leader of the conductorless ensemble. When we think of the concert, um, there's a brand new 20th or 21st century work by Jesse Montgomery. Then there's a romance by Dvorak and two works by Beethoven. Now, this is really a concert a concert of amazing substance. Uh, Absolutely. Which would you say of the four works on the program would be your most challenging? I'm putting you on the spot, but. Yeah, um, well, obvious, uh, or it's obvious to me that um, both with the Beethoven Symphony because of its musical substance. So, but I actually am not concerned about the leadership and ensemble as much. Um, I want to make sure that we have adequate rehearsal so that we can arrive jointly at a conception and a performance which is more than just a reading. You know, I want it to have true substance and depth and an impact and, a, and a, an interpretation. So I'm going to be preparing um, carefully to consider what approach I want to take, but of course this has to be in collaboration with uh, with the other musician. Jesse Montgomery, I know this work, I've played it before. Uh, I've played it with a conductor, and it is a short piece, it's only a few minutes long, uh, but it is. it does have changing meters, and it's um, somewhat there are parts of it that are complex um, for the ensemble. So I'm, I'm also just wondering how that's going to come together. Hopefully it'll come together great. But luckily we're rehearsing, before we rehearse with the whole group, we're rehearsing just with the principal strings, principal strings and winds. And we'll have a chance to play it as a string quintet before we play it with the other musicians. Um, in the fall works, two of them you will be functioning with the orchestra as accompanist to a fabulous young violinist, Tessa Lark. Now, earlier you had said to me that you and Tessa had actually worked together. So tell us a little bit about what it's like to collaborate with somebody like that. I actually think that those two violin romances are going to be uh, a delight and they're going to be easy to put together, I anticipate because she is um, such a consummate artist and we will simply be glued to everything that she's doing. And, and her, speaking of conception and interpretation, her um, music making is so thoughtful and so um, beautifully logical and understandable. I really think those are gonna be comparatively easy for the orchestra to be able to simply listen and play with her. Wow. Eric spoke to them separately, but with Laura and Tessa, it's clearly a mutual admiration society. All of the times previously that you played with us, there was a conductor. And yeah. this time you're going to be working with a collaborator who you've worked with in the past, mm -hmm. Laurie Hamilton, who is not only the concertmaster, but the leader as well. Yes. How do you and Laurie get along in the past and how do you envision this collaboration with a chamber orchestra rather than maybe one or two chamber musicians is going to, to work out as, as a large concert rather than a small intimate chamber group. Right, Laurie's amazing. I just love her energy and sensibility. I feel like our musical approaches are very similar. 
Um, most recently, I was just with her in Lake Tahoe, and we had a really beautiful time together. I was playing Tchaikovsky Concerto, and that was with um, a, a conductor, but she was concert master, of course. And, and just having her, again, this energy you're talking about between the audience, between performers, is, is just so beautiful to have there and what an amazing player so I anticipate this being a big old love fest because I also just love being with city music I love Urgeny and Ron so much the the co-founders um so I, I think it's going to be an amazing thing I haven't had too much experience with um playing conducting though the times I have done it it um, it's amazing how a large orchestra almost feels like it it shrinks because everybody is um, it just requires more presence from everybody who's there. Um, no knock to conductors and and that energy, but it's just that the the hierarchy is is just much more clearly for the conductor to lead. Um, the, the rehearsals. Laurie has said, in fact, that um, real orchestra playing is all chamber music. Yes. Here's a little flavor of the two romances for violin. First, the Beethoven. of the Dvorak romance. Let's, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about the repertoire. Uh, pretty much what you have played in the past has been uh, a concerto, but now you're going to be playing two romances, which are very substantial pieces of music, one by Beethoven, one by Dvorak. And mm -hmm. the, I'm more familiar with the Beethoven, and uh, Beethoven wrote two romances, which each run about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think the Dvorak is that. So you put two of those together, 20 minutes, you've got a Mozart concerto and, uh, you know, most of anything past that. Uh, mm -hmm. So who, who picked this for you? So, yes, exactly for me. That was um, Urgeny um, uh -huh. made, made the pick and, and she, she had let me know the theme of, of the season, just lots of, you know, about all about colors and the expression of, of you know, resplendence in, in music. And so she definitely opened the door for me to, to make suggestions. But part of what happened with me during the pandemic is that I just was overwhelmed and sort of hold up and so she finally said well how about I make a suggestion and you play these two romances and I was I was thrilled by the idea first of all because though they're extremely challenging in their own right um, my mental capacity will not be um, on overdrive with you know technical thoughts and so I will be able to have the bandwidth to just be really collaborating with everyone as you said Lori mentioned it's just really going to be a chamber music affair. Um, I'm also less familiar with the Dvorak. I've never played it before and always adored it from afar and Dvorak's music in general. Obviously 
the connection we have to the love of Americana and American folk music. But also he is just one of the greatest composers of, of melodies to have ever existed. And a romance, of course, is the perfect opportunity to showcase that. Um, so I, I've always, always wanted to play this piece. So I'm really excited to really get to know the solo part and be able to get into the weeds with all of the musicians and really see what we can craft in great detail well, with that. Absolutely fantastic. And we're really looking forward to that. Violin soloist Tessa Lark and concertmaster leader Laura Hamilton in conversation with Eric Kish. I'm Jim Merling, along with Eric, thanking you for joining us for this concert preview from City Music Cleveland. The concert is free and offered on four dates at four separate locations. The concert will be on Thursday, October 27th at the Temple Tifereth Israel at 26,000 Shaker Boulevard in Beechwood, on Friday the 28th at St. Noel Catholic Church at 35200 Chardon Road in Willoughby Hills, on Saturday the 29th at the Shrine of St. Stanislaus, at 3649 East 65th Street in Cleveland, and on Sunday, April 30th, a matinee concert at 3 p.m. at Lakewood Congregational Church, 1375 West Clifton Boulevard in Lakewood. Thanks for joining us for the podcast. We hope you'll join us for the concert.